So let's move on to the root. To what, what is the cause? Let's talk about the cause. As I said before, we've heard many times body, mind, spirit. But it's actually reversed. And it should be spirit, mind, body. And as you see this, the, the size of these circles, we try to proportionate the, the importance of each of those of the, each of those entities. The truth of the matter is the spirit <coughs> and the mind probably need to be bigger than beach balls, and this body needs to be about the size of a ping pong ball down here. Because the body is simply a puppet on a string. It simply manifests in whatever's in our energy field. So let's talk about these energy fields. We have a creative, in, in, a, a creative information field. Now, they theorized, theorized this years ago, and fairly, oh God, man, I know it's bad. 20 years ago, I seen brilliant photography where they actually revealed energy fields around living entities. And um, then the technology system had just got so much more refined that it's, it's phenomenal what's going on now. But there is a field of information around it. If I had a, an acorn up here, it would have a field of energy. Okay? If, if any, any living entity has a dynamic field of energy around it. Now, the more intelligent we are, the more that we can change and make that dynamic. And what, what changes the dynamics of that is our feelings and emotions. So when we get filled with love and passion and, and joy, our energy field expands way out. When we get under stress and tension, worry and fear and anger, it contracts back in. And, and, all, and, and those are very visible. Now we've gone beyond just the stuff where they can actually visualize the energy field change. And now we've got technology to actually measure the vibrational frequency of it. And we know that, that oh, average probably somewhere in the 20 to 30,000 range. And there's a, there's a number of different instruments, but I'm going to use the one that I'm most familiar with. Uh, 20 to 30,000 range is where most of us exist at. And there's been many times that we've been extremely um, inspired or spiritual, uh, spiritually connected, and that will in turn it cause our energy field to expand way out. And then there's been other times that we've been detached spiritually and filled with a lot of stress and tension and anxiety, and that causes our energy field to contract in and vibrate at a lower frequency. But they can measure these things. And they found that people that are severely um, depressed, um, and, and the lowest that, that they can measure is when someone goes into a paranoid schizophrenic um, and is near suicide, they vibrate at a frequency as low as 5, 6, 7, 8,000 cycles per second. Now they found other people that are that are extremely um, um, great healers, um, and, and I'm talking about when they go to Eastern countries and they take people that are out of this society and they pretty much stay up in in um, in um, not caves but up away from society where they're not dealing with the everyday stresses that we deal with and they're in meditation the vast majority of their life in seclusion. They've measured them and and, and they also focus on and have healing powers. And you've seen the, the you know, you've seen the televangelist. Well, I'm here to tell you that outside of that stuff where we, we all have a perception that those guys are all crooks and because some of them have turned out to be, there's actually people that project energy that actually knock people off their feet. And, and, and they've measured some of those phenomenal healers and their energy fields are up to 50, 60, and they've even found one fellow who, um, who has a vibrational frequency of 70,000 cycles per second. They, they speculate that Christ probably had a vibrational frequency somewhere around 100,000 cycles per second. But my point is, what is it that changes our vibrational frequency? What is it that changes that? And we're going to get into that. So this creative field of, in, of information, and you can see, here's a sperm cell, and here's an egg or an ovum. And in this situation, as we're talking about human beings, we're talking about health and well-being, when around this is a is a the vibrational frequency of the mother. Okay? And you can take this out of the mother, you can put it in the test tube. We've all heard of test tube babies. Okay? They took the egg and they took the sperm, they put them in a test tube and fertilized that egg, and they let it grow in that test tube. Nobody's attached to it. Okay? They let it grow and, until these two cells, the mitosis, are divided into four, and then eight, and then sixteen, and thirty-two, and sixty-four, and so on, until third, fourth week into, into uh, development, it's millions of cells by now. There's no connection to anything. All it's just in a saline solution where it can exist, 
and it continues to mitose into that, then they implant that back into the mother's womb, and then it, and then it grows to fruition, and, and we've got a baby, and those test tube babies, there's a number of them still walking around today. Okay? So my point is, how does that happen? How does that happen? There, you know, there's, there's no brain in here. And, and we know darn well there's no brain over here. <laughs> okay? So when they come together, what is it that controls that? When I lecture at, um, at the two graduate schools that, I, that I'm on faculty extension with, I ask the, I ask the students, have you all taken um, embryology before? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well tell me, how do those two cells when they come together divide into four? And they sit and they look. Because see, even in, in our schools, we're still taught that old model. We don't, we're, not, we're not talking about this energy field out around here. Now some of the more advanced schools are beginning to. But I ask them, how did those go from two cells to four? Oh, it's a simple question. I don't need to know about trillions. Just two to four, how did that happen? What's the controlling factor? It's not taught. We don't know. It just happens. And that's accepted. It's not very scientific, but it's accepted. What we know now is this. That creative field of information around there is really like this. It's really those two cells have around them a field of energy that's a holographic image of the mother and the father. And as our technology continues to evolve more and more, what we're beginning to see is more and more detail of this. So when those two, when those two holographic images or energy fields or, or spirits, if you will, when those two spirits come together, what happens is we now have a new energy field, a new energy field that those two are growing into. Okay? That's okay. That's good. <laughs> so, here we have these two energy fields, and those two energy fields come together and formulate this one. And those two cells grow into that energy field, and they're controlled by this energy field. And here's the part, I'm, I'm, remember we're going to spend some time out of the box, okay? This isn't going to be your usual thinking, okay? Those two cells grew up to be, depending on your reference, somewhere between 70 and 100 trillion cells in our human body. You ready for this one? And even though somewhere along the third week when we're about 600 billion cells, still no brain there, those cells begin to lay down a little groove where the nervous system, where the central nervous system and brain will actually begin to develop. Where does it come from? The field energy. Spirit. Okay? And guess what? These 100 trillion cells here now are still growing into this energy field. That's what we know now. But yet, we're not even looking at that energy field. We're treated as a physical body in the philosophy that we exist in. We're, everything's physical. We're not paying any attention to this out here. And we're continually developing drugs to treat these conditions that develop. All the while, what's causing these conditions to develop is aberrant vibrational frequencies that are in our energy field. We'll get to that. So we're growing into that energy field. So we can see we've got a contradiction. Buckminster Fuller said this, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change, you build a new model that makes the old model obsolete. The change and build a new model that makes the old model obsolete. So should we jump into this world, let them dictate to our philosophy, get on this path, head down this path, and believe the things that, that we're going to be told that, you know, well, it's all part of getting old, and, and it's arthritis, and there's nothing that can be done, and, and getting old sucks, and when you do get old, you just got to put up with it, and you get on some different drugs and be the average person by the age of 65 on six different drugs, and that's just the way that it is. is it, that's the old model. Is there a different model? If we look into this energy, it's good. Could there be? We are products of our environment. All of us are products of our environment. We're, and I'm going to drive this from home. We're going to get to understand this, okay? We are products of our environment and that energy field that we were born into. That's called our energetics, and we'll touch base on that more. But we are truly products of our environment. What is our environment? 
Okay